Um, my name is Angelique Medina. I'm with Thousand Eyes and I'm part of the product marketing team. And we're going to talk today about the integrations that were recently announced between Thousand Eyes and the Cisco networking platforms. But before we do that, I want to provide a very high level overview of what it is that Thousand Eyes does just for context. So as we run through and, and talk about the integrations and some examples of what this looks like, we'll have uh, some view as to, to what it is that Thousand Eyes is providing. And then we'll jump into the specific platforms that uh, we announced recently and what that integration looks like. And then we're going to spend the bulk of our time looking at examples and specific scenarios of how Thousand Eyes augments uh, Cisco SD-WAN visibility. And we'll do that from uh, within the product. Um, and so with that, for those of you who are not familiar with Thousand Eyes, at a high level, uh, Thousand Eyes is focused on providing or looking at application performance from the standpoint of users. So how users experience applications. And of course, we know that users are connecting to applications over a network and in most cases, many networks. And because a lot of applications today are being delivered from the cloud, they're connecting over the Internet. So ISPs and transit providers, as well as cloud provider and SaaS provider networks. And all of these domains are outside of the management and control of IT. And that becomes a challenge in terms of understanding how you can uh, address issues and ensure good experience for users. So Thousand Eyes is focused on these external environments. We're generating network telemetry and application telemetry uh, for these external networks and applications. And then we're correlating that together and enriching it with metadata like geolocation and operator information as well as BGP routing. And from that, we're able to provide a holistic picture of all of the different factors that are influencing how a user is experiencing an application at any given point in time. And in order to do that, we need to have a lot of different eyes on the applications. So we have these cloud agents that are deployed throughout the internet and cloud environments. And from those locations, they're able to look at how an application is performing. We also have these agents that are deployed on end user devices. Uh, again, these are active monitoring agents that are generating synthetic traffic to applications or services. And the end user vantage point is looking at how a specific user is experiencing an application from where they're located. And what we're looking at in the middle are really these um, vantage points that are designed to be deployed by enterprises within their own environments, so environments that they manage. The, it's a lightweight software based agent and it can deploy in a variety of form factors. You can deploy it, for example, in a cloud VPC or on prem, say branch office or data center. Now, when you're, when you're looking to get visibility at scale, you have a lot of sites, uh, you may have your data center locations. It can be a challenge for users to uh, not only scale in terms of hosting, but also in agent management. And so with this, this announcement that's been made recently, the idea here is that we're making Thousand Eyes uh, vantage points effectively ubiquitous throughout Cisco network platforms. So- Angelique. Sorry, I have a question about the previous yeah. slide. Yes. And uh, I can't see here any, you know, uh, mobile endpoint in, in terms of, you know, phones, for example. Right, right. That are becoming more and more common or, or even, you know, IoT devices. Yes, that, that's a good point. We don't currently have a mobile agent. Um, in terms of IT, there's some, uh, not something we can get into details here, but there's some work being done to address some IoT use cases. Um, the end user vantage point um, or the agent that can deploy on user devices, something that um, has the ability to be repurposed for those types of use cases. But yes, today don't have a mobile agent. Okay, thank you. So the idea here is that we're effectively embedding the Thousand Eyes agent across these uh, network these various hardware platforms. So earlier this year announced the integration with the Catalyst 9K. Uh, we talked about that at a previous tech field day. My colleague addressed that. The most recent announcement has been around the router edge router series, as well as the data center switching platform. So the idea here is that we're providing options and, um, you know, effectively visibility outposts from which 
IT can get visibility into external environments because it's not just the users who are sitting in branch offices that are consuming more applications or business SaaS, for example. It's also the applications themselves. They're connecting to APIs or they might be connecting to workloads that are hosted within a cloud provider. And so the, um, the need to gain that external visibility is really important. Um, and this is a way to make that really easy to do. So you have effectively a turnkey um, agent that's embedded in each of these platforms and they can be managed with their respective management consoles. I have a question. Okay. Yes. So um, if you have these agents and it's embedded into the hardware, especially with what we've seen on the news, what kind of, and you might be getting to this, what kind of security is there for this not to be, because I'm sure that could be a lot of damage if that was compromised. So they, there is some partitioning in terms of the application hosting environment. There's already an application hosting environment that's available within these platforms where, you know, it's, it's effectively siloed from um, the, the underlying system. So there's not really a security issue there. You can kind of think, and we'll touch on this in terms of the SD-WAN um, implementation, but, you know, it's, you can kind, kind of think of it as almost just like a host that's sitting behind, for example, the router. It's not, um, it doesn't have access to anything um, at a system level. So it's not really a concern from a security standpoint. Okay. And so in terms of, in terms of uh, some of the the details on this, so the Catalyst 8300, 8200, and the ISR4K are what are covered in terms of the SD-WAN platforms deploys as a Docker container. Um, in the initial implementation, it's just going to have a single interface, but there are plans to add additional interfaces to make it a little bit easier to do um, some of the more complicated or complex, um, like full mesh uh, testing between SD-WAN sites, for example. And this is going to be available in August, so it's a 17.6 uh, release, as well as the um, the ability to manage these agents is in the the manage 20.6. And so there's a feature template that enables you to very easily um, deploy these across whatever devices you select. Um, you will need a thousand eyes subscription in order to leverage these agents from a testing standpoint, and then you'll, you'll effectively bind the agents to your account, and then you can use it to uh, run active tests from that particular agent. Um, the Nexus 9K, I'm not gonna touch on this too much. This is gonna be coming up a little bit later this year around the October, November timeframe. Um, but the idea here is that you won't need to upgrade um, in order to take advantage of this. You'll be able to just deploy it once that's available. So in terms of the visibility that we're providing and sort of extending from an at Cisco SD-WAN standpoint. So just at a high level, and we'll get a little bit more detail on this. So, you know, with Cisco SD-WAN, you obviously have some visibility that allows you to optimize um, path selection. Um, but beyond the WAN, you're not able to see uh, issues like that are occurring further upstream um, in ISP providers or in cloud providers that may be impacting performance or the application itself. And also within the, the underlay for an, S, for a, an SD-WAN fabric, um, you know, if, you're, if you've moved to, to SD-WAN, the implication is that you're much more internet dependent. And so getting visibility into these best effort networks where you don't necessarily have an SLA like you would with MPLS is, um, is really important. Um, the other thing is in particular, having the agent on the hosting on the, the router itself eliminates the need for external compute, which when you're talking about branch offices um, or SD-WAN locations, that can be, you know, especially there a, a challenge in terms of um, scale. And unlike a data center, you may not have access to, um, the network team might not have access to compute. Um, so, um, in terms of like the specific visibility, you know, again, with Cisco SD-WAN, you're, you're getting um, measurements of network telemetry from point to point. So this could be between the SD-WAN endpoints or between an SD-WAN endpoint and an application. And you can see between those two points what the network performance is, and you can get metrics like packet loss, latency, and jitter. Um, and that's valuable information in order to make path selection uh, determinations um, but 
what it doesn't enable you to do, and this is really why Thousand Eyes comes in, is to understand the specific network path. So you can see um, each individual hop, not only in the SD-WAN underlay, but also beyond the uh, SD-WAN fabric into um, transit providers, ISPs, as well as cloud and SaaS provider networks. And that can be important um, for a number of reasons. I'll talk about this a little bit. Um, in some, for example, in some situations, you might have a two service providers. One may not be performing, um, you know, consistently may not be performing as well as they should. You want to be able to troubleshoot and address those issues um, and not just favor, for example, one provider. Um, so um, the network telemetry that we uh, provide is also correlated with application performance, and that's important because it enables the um, enables you to understand the context for this network performance. It may be that you have issues like a spike in network latency that doesn't necessarily impact how an application is performing, and so it may not be a priority to address it, um, and vice versa. You might have an application issue and you don't necessarily see anything happening from a network standpoint. So having that application context is really important for troubleshooting purposes. So this, you know, again, enables uh, the IT to very quickly pinpoint where an issue is occurring, who's responsible, and then, you know, address the issues, um, uh, whether it's the underlying underlying transport for the fabric or beyond the uh, SD1 fabric. Angelica, I have a couple of questions. I mean, yes, I'm yes. not a networking guy, so maybe I'm getting this totally wrong, but actually, I don't really understand the role of the agent. Is it uh, just a telemetry tool? So it pushes data to, to, you know, some server, some service, whatever, or can I query it from the outside directly? So it's a two-way communication and probably more attackable for, from, from an hacker or, you know, it, it could pose some security risks so because you are exposing a lot of information. So, so and all yeah. the communication is encrypted and how it works. So that, that's, that's the question. Yeah, so the so basically what the agent is doing is it's generating synthetic traffic. So it is doing this in terms of like network, um, you know, like there's uh, basically network probing as well as um, simulating connecting to an application. So you might do like a HTTP get request and then it's, um, you know, so so none of the traffic is it's not looking at production traffic. Basically, it's not collecting it. It's not looking at it. Um, it is entirely synthetic traffic just to, to um, uh, basically get measurements. So there's, and, and in terms of two-way communication, do you mean in terms of, of pushing the, the telemetry to the Thousand Eyes app, or do you mean in terms of uh, connecting to something external? I mean, I mean so uh, on, I, I would expect that there is a, a specific set of things that you know this agent does, and so it collects information and it pushes it to the to the server. But actually, can I modify its behavior from uh, from uh, you know a, a third uh, point, which is not the agent and the and the server? Maybe accessing to it and you know change how they collect the data or routing the data to another. Uh, no, so it's only designed to effectively talk to Thousand Eyes, and then you know from Thousand Eyes, basically you know like the the our SaaS application, um, because all of the data is basically pushed to our SaaS app, and these agents are just distributed and generating these synth synthetic traffic flows. Um, they don't like we do have an API. But it's not at the agent level. It's for the SaaS application. So there's not something where somebody can go in and configure, you know, a test at an agent level. This is really just designed to um, execute a active or kind of um, a test based on the parameters that are given to it by um, Thousand Eyes and and the SaaS application. So there's there's no um, kind of ability to have a third party effectively um, connecting to this to a particular agent and making a change to the agent. So I saw the agents okay. on the UCS devices were um, either Docker or Linux, I guess. 
what is it? Uh, what are the agents on the Windows and the Apple devices? Uh, those, so those are, and so those are slightly different agents. So those, um, those are not Docker containers. Um, they, they effectively, you know, so there's two, there's a browser, um, component to it. And then there's sort of a system level 1, um, that, uh, yeah, so it's not, it's not a, a Docker or anything like that. It's, it's basically designed for user laptops. Okay. And, and it does, does it yeah. does have access, it does have system, it basically has some system level access in order to um, generate some of the, the traffic um, from the device. I, I, I'm getting the, the, the questions around security. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the, in the mist here on how you are going to manage all of that in a secure and tightened way. So, um, you won't get uh, something on your systems that can harm you really bad. Yeah, I can say that we're really, really like from a security standpoint, like we're extremely security conscious. We have um, regular audits that we do. I mean, there's like we're used by some of the largest financial services organizations around the globe. Like most of the top banks use us. They go through thorough kind of audits of, you know, all of the agents that we use, whether it's ones that are deployed um, on user devices, as well as on devices within their own environments. So um, from the standpoint of, you know, is there any issue in terms of, of these being compromised? Um, you know, I can say that from the standpoint of, of some of these very security conscious organizations, um, um, they're not concerned and, and um, so, and we can, Maybe um, in terms of like specifics on the the agent and kind of how they're um, deployed in terms of the endpoint and and the the enterprise agent, um, you know, we can can maybe get into the details of that offline. So it's so one of the things you know again, it's important to remember that this is not looking at anything. It's not looking at user traffic. It's not collecting um, anything from the production network. It's just generating some synthetic traffic. So there's, you know, you're, you're basically, you know, sending a ping to a server or your, um, your, uh, maybe uh, doing like a an HTTP um, get request or something like that. So there's no, there's nothing from the standpoint of of you know, information that, that is necessarily compromising. I think that's what we're having a problem with, and we can probably take it offline maybe, but I think the problem is, is that information, if it's compromised, is really important information, right? And these are actually the same tools that if somebody penetrated a network, it's the same kind of stuff they do. And it's really important for the applications and the new types of applications that we have. I guess, um, I know for myself, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around, okay, so, um, I don't think putting something behind a firewall and I don't think something, um, I, I don't think that that's enough to, to, to ease my security concern, especially given the security breaches we've seen in the past year. So um, I think that's where we're going. This information is important information that could lead somebody to very easily, if they were able to get this information to, to infiltrate your business and like this, this would be great tool for them. So, well, kind of I mean, unnerving. remember, like, these are, these are designed really to look at external environments. So, for example, like this is setting sitting on the router edge and you're collecting, you know, network telemetry from your ISP or the transit provider. So you're looking effectively yeah. at, you know, what is the IP address between my location? So not my internal environment, but from my location to say a SaaS provider. So you are uncovering things like um, the IP address of the router hops between your site and say, you know, a cloud provider or a SaaS provider, but that's all information that is collectible with standard sort of network troubleshooting tools, right? Like you can spin up a, you know, um, and basically issue a ping to Google, for example, and you can collect right, right. similar information. This is not anything that's IP or um, sensitive um, 
what we're effectively doing is making this uh, scalable better um, getting around some of the issues in terms of certain platforms that that um, uh, you know may may not uh, or certain end devices that may not support some of this um, you know, some of this telemetry that we collect so it's not anything that any that's that anyone couldn't get from any other like using other uh, types of standard tools. So the that's difference helpful. is that, yeah, so the difference, you know, if you think about an application provider, for example, because like we're used by like a lot of the top SaaS providers, they want to understand how users are experiencing their application from the outside. So what they'll do is they'll have these things positioned. Now, in theory, mm -hmm. they could do a number of different things from the outside. They could do like, you know, they could ping their application, you know, they could um, simulate a user interacting with the application using like scripts, for example, but doing that at scale and then correlating that network performance with the application performance is really challenging and yeah. keeping a historical record and reporting on it. And so it's important to understand that this is like what we're looking at here is things that you need to be able to do when you, you know, at a, you, you can actually kind of do different things to get some of this information and kind of cobble it together. Um, but this way you're making it scalable, you're making it really easy to consume um, and, and look at and report on. So, you know, I, I hope that sort of addresses the security thing, because again, we're, we're collecting information that's, that's kind of out there and is available to be, you know, collected. Yeah, that's very helpful, that explanation. Thanks a lot. All right, so for, uh, okay, so as far as time, we can kind of power through some of these examples. So in terms of the WAN underlay, you know, we're looking at here two different sites. So we have a branch office on the left-hand side, we have a data center on the right-hand side, we have two edge routers connecting those sites. And we can see, you know, this is an encrypted tunnel that's connecting uh, those two router, those two routers, those two sites, and, you know, we don't see any of the underlying network um, nodes, um, but we can see that there's an issue in terms of delay. So there's a spike in latency, but uh, we don't necessarily know where. And that's really where Thousand Eyes comes in. So these are, you know, again, these are um, service provider nodes between two sites. So um, you have your ISPs or your transit providers, and you're able to see um, specifically where latency might be occurring or um, if they're suboptimal routing. So here, I know that these two locations are within the same region. So right off the bat, I can see that there's a large number of hops um, that are between those two sites. So that's probably an indication that there's um, less than optimal routing between these two locations. So sort of an example of the difference between just knowing the end-to-end -end metrics um, and performance versus understanding what is contributing to that. So which service provider, which node, um, so this is an example where um, there was a branch office connecting to regional hub and they had sort of inconsistency in terms of latency. So um, they would have uh, spikes in latency and you know, it would go from like less than 30 milliseconds to 70 milliseconds. And so, you know, they wanted to understand what was happening. So when they were looking at the network path using thousand eyes and here we're, we're sort of aggregating nodes and looking that, at them from the standpoint of location and service provider, um, we can see that there's um, their, one of their service providers is connecting to um, their data center, which is um, was located in uh, Singapore, but they're connecting through Hong Kong. Um, so that, all, that basically was what was contributing to the increase in latency. And then when they looked at when latency was normal, um, they could see that it was due to a more optimal path that was being taken by the, uh, their other service provider. And so, you know, this is an instance in which, you know, they had consistently poor performance from one service provider and expected performance from another. And while, you know, you could use um, automated routing to uh, prefer one provider over the other, you want to be able to address things that are systemic um, and also manage your, your providers to make sure that they're meeting your performance expectations. So this is 
Um, about a couple of weeks later, they were able to resolve the issue with that provider. And here we can see that now they have consistent performance across both service providers. Um, so this is an example of by providing this type of data to their, their in this case, one of their um, ISPs that was connected to this branch office, they were able to get this routing issue addressed. Um, so it's, it's not just about um, kind of knowing the performance, also being able to action on it. And, and um, you know, here we can see that they have consistent performance now. And so this is an example of, you know, an, an issue where there was a spike in response time for a, a Microsoft application. So they're hitting the login page of the application. They had normal app response time, but then, you know, we see really significant elevation in response time. And you can then go down and understand, is it this the application or is the network? And we can see that this corresponds with an increase in um, network latency. Um, and, you know, this is something where they were able to determine that during normal, um, typical performance, this particular site was connecting into Microsoft's network um, locally. So they were connecting to, um, they were basically entering Microsoft's network in San Jose, um, which is close to San Francisco, and also connecting to a um, an app server there. And when the performance uh, network latency spiked, it was um, due to the fact that they were um, getting connected into Microsoft's network in LA, and then um, you know they were hitting an app server in Atlanta. And so this is an example where even if you're optimizing your paths and, and maybe you're um, connecting to a cloud provider via an Equinix facility, maybe you're breaking out um, your traffic very close to where the cloud provider is located, you can't control how traffic is routed in the cloud provider or the SaaS provider. And so being able to see um, how they're routing traffic and then have the ability to, you know, share this data with the service provider or the cloud provider is is very helpful in um, addressing issues. So it's, you know, you don't necessarily need to um, have direct control over the network. You can share this information out and uh, and get it addressed by the provider. So um, just quickly, you know, one of the things that's really important as well is just, again, the application context. So um, we enable you to understand how the network um, is influent or impacting the application and vice versa. So you don't necessarily need to address issues at the network level if it's not impacting app performance and vice versa. And so um, having, a, having this um, ability to see both is really important as, as you, know, you manage the experience of users or applications that are sitting in your data center. So, um, in terms of you know what's next, uh, the August release is when the um, iOS XE 17.6 and vManage 20.6 will be available. Um, and we highly encourage uh, folks out there to sign up for a free trial. It's very intuitive to use and you don't necessarily have to deploy anything. You can leverage cloud agents to just spin up tests and start playing with it. Um, and uh, you know, we're continuing to integrate across the networking platforms. We have more announcements that are coming up later this year. So uh, stay tuned for that. 